Lost in the heart of the Peruvian Amazon, there is a vine that is said to talk to humans, giving an understanding of the secrets of life. The custodians of this plant are the medicine men or shamans, for the vine does not give up its secrets easily. I don't know if I have the strength for this power. The great 19th century palm house in the Royal Botanical Gardens at Kew is a mecca for anyone interested in tropical plants. Piers Gibbon is an actor and voiceover artist who's also a keen amateur ethnobotanist. He's already collected one plant for the Royal Botanical Gardens, although he didn't have to go far to find this one. This is my baby. This is Salvia divinorum. It's a shamanic plant. It's used in Mexico. And I didn't have to go to Mexico to get it, however. It's a bit of a cheat because I found it growing very badly in a scientist's house in Hampstead Heath. I, don't, I haven't really earned the right to have my name on a plant label yet. But what I'd love to do is actually bring back one of the plants that Q doesn't have and put it in Q and have my name on the label saying, this is where I found it, this is what it does. The collection of living plants for study in the laboratory is an accepted tenet of Western botany, but Piers is no ordinary plant collector. What I'm interested in is a little backwater, which are the plants that speak to us, the plants that tell us what they're good for, the plants that actually have something to say directly to the person taking them. Have you ever had plants speak to you? I think so. I think I've had plants speaking to me, but I don't know the language they're speaking in. For peers, the botany of a plant is only half the story. To know it fully, you must experience its effects. Ever since he first discovered the talking plants, studying human sciences at university, he has experimented with the hallucinogenic flora. I don't feel it's a juvenile thing to do. I think it's a grown-up thing to do, to get to a place in your life where you feel blocked in some way and then go for an experience, whether it's skydiving, bungee jumping or taking ayahuasca, that can help you get through that. British plants are one thing, but in the Amazon, they use Banisteriopsis carpi, or ayahuasca, for their therapy, and it is strong medicine. The bitter ayahuasca brew first makes its drinker violently sick, but it's in the fierce and often terrifying hallucinations that follow that the healing is said to lie. But ayahuasca doesn't work on its own. Rather, it acts as a key to unlock the psychotropic qualities of another plant, and it's this plant that Piers is after. Professor Sir Gillian Prance was until recently the director of Kew Gardens. This, it seems, is only one half of the ayahuasca brew, although it's called ayahuasca. Yes, very definitely. The other half is a shrub in the murder family called Psychotria viridis, and the local people call it Chacrona, and it really doesn't work well unless you mix those leaves in with the brew of the vine of ayahuasca. Why doesn't you have the Chacrona? The Chacrona looks like almost any other small green bush in the forest, and so I think it probably has not been collected for that reason. It would be easy to get if you went out there with one of the shaman, they would take you straight to it as they have many times. To find the Chacruna, Piers first needs to find a shaman to lead him to it. We, we got rid of our shamans 400 years ago. We burnt the witches. And yet, in other cultures, in Peru, they have these shamans still there. And I just have this feeling that if I could only learn from someone whose job it is to take people through these plant experiences, I could actually understand why I've been obsessed with the damn things for so long. I think it is dangerous to dabble in it and not go into it wholeheartedly as a few people have and really be apprentices. I also think that it can be rather dangerous if you're taking these things without uh, following the full instructions of the shaman. I've reached the end of the line with academia in this subject. I think I've read all the books that I can read on it. 
And it's so much easier to read about them than to actually take them. And so much easier to talk about them than to actually sit down and drink a vile tasting liquid. It's a dangerous journey. I do recognize that you can't go into the ticket office and demand a return. <laughs> first stop for Piers on his search for a shaman to help him unlock the secrets of Chacruna is the capital of Peruvian Amazonia, Iquitos. There's only one way to find the real thing when you're in a strange city, and that's to get out on the street. Fortunately, there's a thriving tourist industry here. Ayahuasca, have you heard of it? No. no. The most important thing is that you feel uh, much love. That's all. It's more red word. <laughs> you became a type. After three nights of canvassing opinions on the boulevards and back streets of Iquitos, Piers has finally found what he's looking for. I think I found the right shaman to go with for my uh, entrance into the ayahuasca zone. And I love the fact that he's called Alan. Hi. You're Alan. Alan. Pierce. Yeah. Nice to do. Thank you. This is my dog. <laughs> Fantastic. Actually, she doesn't bark. She only whistles. American facilitator Alan Shoemaker has been introducing tourists to the delights of ayahuasca for the past nine years. And it's really all about purge, 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 uh, every way you possibly can, right. getting phlegm out of your system. Okay. We, we, we cook all day. Uh, in the evening, we have the ceremony. We give you the medicine. Uh, sit back and it uh, takes about anywhere from 20 minutes to 45 minutes before you start to feel the effects. And what you want to do is relax and get your ego out of the way as quickly as possible. In practical terms, I, I never quite understand how to let go of an ego. How would you explain that? How well, if you have a medicine that's strong enough, I think it won't make any difference. Okay. It, your ego will get out of the way.